Welcome to Give Energy Support and how to manually update the firmware on your Give Energy inverter. Now all you'll need to complete this is a machine running either Windows or Mac OS X and a way of transferring files from that machine to a USB A device. Please make sure you're watching the correct video for your specific inverter. On the side here, so I have a generation three inverter, you will see your serial number. You can also find it on the portal and on the top left hand corner of the app if you click the menu button, the three lines. So mine starts with FD, which means I have a generation three inverter. This is quite important as some of them look visually very similar and it's easy to confuse them. So this video is specifically for the generation three hybrid give energy inverter, which serial number must start with FA or FD. That's Foxtrot Alpha or Foxtrot Delta. Please make sure if you're doing this manual update of your inverter or battery system, it's either under direction by Give Energy Support or it's failed the automatic process from the portal and you're gonna to have to do it manually to recover the system. Please make sure you only get the firmware files from Give Energy, either from the portal or email to you directly by Give Energy Support. There are firmware files floating around the internet, Facebook groups, people that own the same system as you. It may not be the correct one for you. It may not be the latest version. So please make sure you only get it directly from Give Energy. Now we're sure you're watching the correct one. All you will need is a USB drive such as this, USB A, and we can begin the process. If Give Energy Support have emailed you the file, then please put that attachment into the downloads folder on your machine. If you've watched the how to update your firmware via the portal video and that's failed and that's brought you to this one, then that's the only way the download button will appear on the portal if the firmware update has failed. As I said in that video, please click the retry update at least once. More often than not, it will work the second time, but if it doesn't, then click download. And then after that, this will appear and essentially just click download again. Then put the file into your downloads folder if it's not already there by default and we can begin the process of transferring it onto the usb pen so the first place we want to go is to click on this pc that will open up this window and we want to go to the downloads folder that we put the files in that we've just got from the portal or from the email so you can see the zip file there i'm going to right click on that then click on extract all if you're on Windows 10, it may look like this. So click on Extract All, and then tick the Show Extracted Files when completing, if it's not already, and just click Extract. A window pops up, and what I'm going to do is to go inside that folder, which is where our firmware files are, so you can see those there. I'm gonna put those just to one side, and then I'm gonna go back to this Downloads window and go to this PC. Now I'm going to plug in the USB drive. That may automatically pop up with another window. If it doesn't, then you'll be able to see it from the This PC window, which you can get to by just clicking on that as before. So what I'm going to do is right click on the USB drive, click Format, or if again you're on Windows 10, click on Format there. Change the file system to FAT32, make sure quick format is ticked, and then click start. Click OK. This should only take a few seconds. Click OK again, and close that window. Now I'm going to go into the USB drive, which you can see there, which is empty, that's good. And now I'm gonna go back to the files that we got from before, the firmware files, and highlight them both. I'm now going to drag those to the USB folder and click copy. So you can either left click and drag or right click and drag as I did there. So these firmware files are now on the USB pen drive. So the last thing to do is to go back to this PC. I can either go down there and click on that or click on this PC at the top and then right click on the drive again and click on eject. Now the USB device is ready to use, we just need to get physical access to the correct place to put it in the relevant unit. For the Gen 3, 
We need to take that off. As the bolt on the left and the right, remove them with an Allen key and carefully take off the front cover so we can gain access to these dip switches. They're in the middle and what we need to do is take a picture of these dip switches right here so you can remember what they were like beforehand because we'll need to revert them back to that state once we're finished. So take a picture of that and then what we need to do is turn them all right now to off. So that's all the way down, number one off, number two down, three down and number four down or off. So that's away from the network port. Now grab the USB pen drive with the firmware on it, plug it into the socket here next to the dip switches and that will start the whole firmware update process. The light at the middle there will start to alternate between green and red and then in a short space of time it will start to flash at a much faster rate. Allow at least five, six, seven minutes for this process, although it's usually a bit quicker than that, and I have shortened this video for obvious reasons. The unit will then restart, as you can see here. Once that's complete, it will then start to flash green and red again very fast. And I have to apologize at this stage because you're going to have to put up with this really annoying continuous beep. Please allow and listen to this annoying beep. I'm gonna silence it now for the purposes of the video, to continue for at least one minute. At that stage, what you can do is effectively just remove the USB pen drive from the underneath of the unit, and that should very quickly silence the beep. And at this stage, the unit will restart and normal service should be resumed. The unit should just come back online and you're back to normal. Remember the picture you took of these dip switches? Get that and make sure these look exactly as they do in the picture because we have to revert them back to their previous state. Once that's done, then put the front bottom cover back onto the unit, tighten them back up again on the right and left hand side with the Allen key, and then just give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it's nice and tight. And that's it, we are done. Please allow several minutes for the battery or inverter, whichever you've just updated, to reconnect to the Give Energy systems. So again, give it a few minutes to make sure it comes back online before you then think, hmm, something's not gone right. If you have any problems with this, then I would suggest the first step is to repeat the process. The step after that, if this has not worked for you, is to contact Give Energy Support Direct and ask for their advice. So we are done here. Thank you ever so much for watching. Any questions, please put in the comments. And if you're looking for any other videos regarding manual update process, they will be in the description below. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you soon.